One of the things we love to do on every Training Camp Live brought to you by Community America is focus on a certain position group. And today we want to focus on the tight ends. Pat Mahomes uh, alluded to it and Travis Kelsey and his unusual ability. Let's go to our focus group of the day, directed by or presented by DirecTV, and we will start with the best tight end in the National Football League in Travis Kelsey. We've talked about the stats. You've chronicled how this guy has done things that's not been done by a tight end in the league before. But Pat gave us a little indication of what makes Travis Kelsey really special. It's, it's his route running. It's his athleticism off the line of scrimmage. It's when he catches the ball, what he can do with the ball. And I know that we're Chiefs guys. This is a Chiefs show. But it is not exaggerating saying that Pat, or Travis Kelsey could be the best tight end of all time when it's all said and done. And, and you're right. I love chronicling these numbers, so let's do it again. 6,465 receiving yards for Travis Kelsey in his career. Most ever by a tight end through his first seven seasons in the league. And he didn't play at all his rookie season. <laughs> 507 catches, fastest tight end in NFL history to 500 catches, did it in less than 100 games, four straight 1,000-yard seasons, only tight end ever to do that. And the past two years have been particularly insane when looking at Travis Kelsey. 2,565 receiving yards. That's the fifth most in the NFL behind only Michael Thomas, Julio Jones, DeAndre Hopkins, and Mike Evans. Are you kidding me? It's unbelievable. Uh, 60 receiving yards in 26 of his last 32 regular season games as well. Only Julio Jones has done that. He is so much more than just a tight end. I mean, he's the best tight end in football. We all know that. But he is one of the best pass catchers, one of the best playmakers in all of football, and there's no debate about it. He loves Kansas City, loves his community, and he is a huge part of this team moving forward. And, Matt, here's what I thought was fascinating when Pat was asked about it today about Kelsey, his ability to read coverages and his route running against those coverages. He said he thinks like a quarterback. Do not forget, Travis Kelsey was one of the top high school quarterbacks in the country coming out of Cleveland, Ohio. And when he went to the University of Cincinnati, there was some thought he would be a college quarterback. I mean, he has a cannon of an arm. Remember that New York Giants game a few years ago? He just launched it like 60 yards. I mean, we have Patrick Mahomes, so we really don't need Travis Kelsey to throw the ball much. But if they ever wanted to do a trick play or something, Travis Kelsey could get, could get the ball there for sure. The other thing, in the last four years, you mentioned those yards. But half of those yards, almost half those yards, are yards after catch. Like, how many times do you see him just catch it and he's pulled down? It's his ability to do that shoulder move, like a post move for an NBA or college basketball player, and then jukes out a player with his back to that player. I mean, I don't see anybody else in the league doing that. He's the ultimate yard after the catch player. I mean, you're right. You never see him just catch the ball and get tackled right away. It's making big plays with his legs, not just with Patrick Mahomes' arm. Let's go down the line here. It was good to see Ricky Seals-Jones back on the field yesterday. He had been missing uh, some time there. Uh, tight end had two years in Arizona. The thing that gets my uh, attention about Ricky Seals-Jones, Matt, uh, 60 catches, eight touchdowns. So he's getting a touchdown about every sixth or seventh touch. Making the most out of those catches. What excites me about Ricky Seals-Jones is he could bring a real athletic element to that second tight end spot. Remember, he was a, a wide receiver in college at Texas A&M before switching over to tight end in the pros. Uh, you know, almost 400 yards receiving two years ago in Arizona. Played for the Cleveland Browns last year. Didn't have a ton of opportunities, but eight of his 14 catches went for double-digit yardage. So he made the most of it. Uh, had a 59-yard catch uh, last season as well. This dude can play, and seeing him back out on the field is really exciting. Um, how can he bring an athletic, dynamic element to this offense that there's already so many great playmakers? If your second tight end can run, can run uh, down the field and be a vertical threat, that's super exciting for this offense. And Andy loves to run a lot of two tight ends, sometimes three tight end sets. We've seen it with Demetrius Harris in years past, last year with Blake Bell, Ricky Seals-Jones here now. A third guy, and it was he was asked, Andy Reid was asked in the news conference about this player. And we've watched him get about 7,000 reps in this camp so far. And it's Nick Kaiser, who played Division II football, albeit at an outstanding Division II school at Grand Valley State. Uh, but Andy talked about Kaiser, and, and Pat talked about Kaiser, uh, just kind of developing within the system. We talk a lot about making the most of opportunities out here. Well, Nick Kaiser has done that over the last year he's been with the Chiefs. I looked back at it. One of Pro Football Focus's highest graded players in the preseason last year for the Chiefs. So did some nice things there. Then he's been around on the practice squad, been around this offense, been around the system, and he's absorbed it. And now he's applying it out on the field, getting a lot of reps. Great camp so far for him. There were some flashes last year from our next tight end, Deion Yelder, the big play against Detroit, a 24-yarder. He gets isolated on the right boundary. And then in the playoffs, he had a catch. Uh, for Deion Yelder, you look at his size and you look at his ability, 
and you could see how he could fit into an Andy Reid offense as a second or third tight end. And Dion has been hurt throughout training camp so far, so we need to see him get out in the field to show us that. Uh, but you're right. I mean, the big catch against the Lions last year, played nine games, didn't get a lot of snaps, but did some things when he was in the game. Um, in the preseason last year, four grabs for 63 yards and a touchdown. Kind of used that size. We could see what the Chiefs coaching staff loves about this kid. So my hope is Dion could uh, rehab that groin injury, get back on the field, get some reps, and show us what he can do. Again, very shortly, we'll have a one-on-one -on -one exclusive interview with one Thornhill. You don't want to miss that. There's a fifth tight end in this group. He was added after camp started. But when I went back and looked at my Super Bowl boards, I looked at the tight end group of the San Francisco 49ers, and there he was, Daniel Helm out of Duke. Uh, he was not active for the 49ers uh, throughout the season, but they kept him on the 53. And now here he is in this camp. But it tells you something when San Francisco kept him on their 53-man roster last year. Yeah, they saw something in him, and now the Chiefs see something in him. He's kind of been thrown in the metaphorical fire here. I mean, being in the middle of camp, it's tough. But he's getting reps. He has good size, um, good young player, uh, making the most of what he can do. That's all you can ask when there's an uphill battle for a player like this joining you mid-camp. Mid all you can do is make the most of your opportunities. And so far, it seems like he's doing that. Again, these tight ends are asked to do a lot. You need to be a great blocker. You have to block in space because this team likes to run screens all over the field. And that if you're a tight end and blocking in this scheme, you've got to block in space. It's just not being an inline blocker setting on a tackle shoulder. And so that requires a lot more than just being able to run and catch passes. But Kelsey brings all of that to this room. And then hopefully you could see Ricky Shields-Jones and the other guys developing into the roles they need to have.